Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and today I'm showing you how to upgrade unsupported PCs to Windows 11. Okay everybody, Microsoft released Windows 11 as a free upgrade to Windows 10 a few years ago now. However, Windows 11 doesn't support all the same hardware as Windows 10. Microsoft released a list of processor and motherboard features basically that were required in order to do that upgrade. Up until now that hasn't really been a problem because you could still just keep running Windows 10 if it works on your computer. However, later this year in October, Windows 10 will be reaching end of life, which means it will no longer be receiving regular security updates from Microsoft. That means you're going to want to upgrade to Windows 11 for any PC that you're using day to day. Now, if Windows is telling you that your computer's too old to upgrade to Windows 11, you might still be able to upgrade anyway. You see certain Windows 11 requirements like TPM versioning, secure boot, and even some processor features aren't actually required. You just need to know how to get around Windows' checks for those features. Last month, I went to do this for a small business that I do the IT for. They had four desktop computers all running Windows 10. While there are several ways to accomplish this, including including things like registry edits, I found a really simple tool called Flyby11 that basically does it all for you. It starts the Windows installer in server mode, which skips most of those compatibility checks, but still installs the regular desktop version of Windows 11 on your PC. I used this tool on all four of those client computers at that business, and every single one of those computers, the upgrade went perfectly fine. Now the tool has been under active development. It's actually so active that over the course of the three days when I upgraded those four computers, each of the different days that I downloaded the tool, it looked slightly different because the developer was updating it basically every night. So it might look slightly different when you grab it than what I'm about to show you. However, the basic steps should remain the same. So without further ado, let's cut to the desktop and I'll show you how to use this tool to upgrade your PC and not have to buy a new one to run Windows 11. And here we are on the desktop. Now I'm going to use a virtual machine to show this to you just because it's a little bit easier for me to capture and demonstrate, but the tool works the same way on physical computers. Like I said, I used it on four of them. So I'm going to go ahead and start the virtual machine here. When it boots up, it's going to display the virtual box logo. Your computer might show the Windows logo there or the manufacturer of your computer. Again, I'm just using a virtual machine, so that's why it's got that logo. But I will go ahead and log into Windows 10 here. And just to quickly run through how this is supposed to work according to Microsoft, I'm going to show you how to check if your computer can be upgraded officially first. So we're going to come in here to the Settings app. We'll go to the Windows Update section. And inside of there, we're going to have a big banner that says Get Ready for Windows 11. You can see it's kind of grayed out here, possibly because this is a virtual machine. Here's a screenshot of what it looks like normally. And if we go ahead and click the Check Hardware Requirements link within the Settings app, that's going to open up a web browser. And this website lists all of the official system requirements for Windows 11. I'm going to click on the link to the PC Health Check app. That's going to download a utility that's going to tell us if this computer can officially support Windows 11. So that's been downloaded. I'll go ahead and open it. It's going to install the utility. And we'll go ahead and open that. So as you can see, the PC Health Check utility has a button that says check now. If I click on that, it's going to tell me that this PC doesn't currently meet Windows 11 system requirements. It's telling me that for two reasons. For one thing, TPM 2.0 is not supported or enabled on this PC. This one's caused by me being in a virtual machine. My computer actually does have a firmware TPM at least, but it's not detected here in the VM. However, this other item actually reflects my physical computer. I built this computer back in 2018. It's got a first generation Ryzen Threadripper processor in it, and that processor is not not on Microsoft's list of officially supported processors. So I'm not going to get the option here in Windows to automatically upgrade. And if I were to insert a Windows 11 installation disk in this computer or this virtual machine, it would also not offer me the option to install unless I were to modify it to get around those restrictions. So this is the point that I assume you're at if you're watching this video, and here's how you can probably upgrade anyway. I'm going to open up a web browser, and this tool is open source. Not sure if I mentioned that during the intro, but we're going to go to github.com slash built by bell, that's B-E-L, slash fly by 11. That's fly by and then the number 11. So here's the GitHub page. The source code is on here for the tools we're about to use. I have had one interaction with the developer so far and it went well. The developer is pretty responsive on the issues open in this repo, but we're going to go down here and click on releases in the sidebar. And that's going to show you the most recent release first. So underneath the most recent release that's listed, just click on the .zip file to download it. 
And once that's been downloaded, we'll go ahead and open it up. You can actually just close the web browser at this point and we'll go ahead and extract this folder so that we can run that program. All right, once that's extracted, we'll go ahead and you should see the Flyby 11 application. When you've extracted these files, the application should have a little icon displayed there next to it that looks like a Windows logo. So I'll go ahead and double click on this and it looks like Windows 10 is trying to protect our PC. Um, we are going to click on more info and then click run anyway. Again, the app is open source. Anybody can go there and audit the source code. We're doing this to get around Microsoft's restrictions, so I'm not too interested in what they have to say about it. Just gonna minimize that folder here. And when you first open this tool up, it's actually going to run a compatibility check. Now, like I said, the Windows 10 compatibility check or the official Microsoft compatibility check failed. This one is succeeding. If you see two check marks here, then your computer actually supports the requirements of Windows 11. Now, the reason Microsoft has been able to get away with doing what they're doing with Windows 11 is because they're not entirely lying when they say that new software sometimes needs newer hardware. Windows 11 does take advantage of several CPU features features and it does require those features in order to run. The code to run without them probably would have been a pretty big burden to keep in Windows alongside the newer code and it has been removed. So these are two high profile examples of features that Windows 11 actually does require. However, it doesn't actually require those other things that were mentioned before like TPM 2.0. So this is basically a little bit more of an honest compatibility check. If you see one or both of these fail, if you see X's here in this compatibility check from Flyby 11, chances are you actually might not be able to run Windows 11. So in that case, you're going to want to look at maybe switching over to Linux or else getting a new PC in order to not be on an end-of-life operating system. However, there are a ton of PCs that actually can run Windows 11. Like you just saw, the official check failed. This third-party check passes. And we can go ahead and click on the green Start Upgrade Now button to launch the proper upgrading tool. You'll see here on the side, the developer did start including a little clippy recreation just for fun with this tool. But to get started here, we need to to download a Windows 11 ISO file. That's the same type of file that you would use if you were creating an upgrade disk like a USB drive to perform a clean installation. And you can do that yourself from the Microsoft website or there's actually a tool we can launch right here. It says download via Fido. I clicked on that and it's gonna give us a menu to download this automatically. So here in the Fido ISO downloader, uh, Windows 11 is selected by default. I'll click continue. And next up, we've got our release. Now, one important thing to note, Microsoft has stated that future updates are not guaranteed if you install Windows 11 on an unsupported PC. Now, minor updates seem to be going through normally for everyone who's used tools like this. However, Windows has these major updates every now and then, versioned by these codes, such as the current 24H2, released in 2024 October. So in the future, it's possible that major upgrades to Windows 11 might not be installed automatically on an unsupported PC the way that they would be if your computer was supported. However, assuming that the actual Windows 11 requirements do not change, you should be able to just run Flyby 11 again in the future, and at that point, you'll have the newer release available to install using this same process. Just wanted to mention that for you to keep in mind if you notice that you're not getting an update later on in the future. For now, we're just trying to get on Windows 11 in the first place, so I'll click continue on the only release available. The addition, the only one available here is home slash pro slash education. They don't really separate the ISOs out too much anymore. And here under the language dropdown, this one is actually important. If you're here in the United States like I am, your PC is probably running the English US version of Windows 10. The default ISO that's downloaded is the English International version. If you select this version, then the installer that opens in a moment will tell you that it's not able to keep all of your files, apps, and settings. It may still be able to keep some of your files, but it'll tell you that it's going to reset your settings and or installed applications. So in order to have an actual upgrade, an in-place upgrade where everything else is kept on your computer, you're going to want to make sure this language matches what you have installed. For me, that's English United States. So after that, I'll click continue. That's going to give us one more option at the bottom here for architecture. This is a regular old PC with an AMD processor. If you have an Intel or AMD processor, you probably want to select x64. If you're not sure which one you have, you probably want to select x64. ARM64 would be for things like certain tablets and possibly very low powered laptops or all in one PCs. But I'll keep the default there, I'll click download, and that's going to open up the web browser directly to a download link. So there's not even a web page that will be displayed here. And up here at the top right, you'll see that a download is currently running for the Windows 11 ISO. It's going to go pretty quickly because Microsoft can afford a lot of bandwidth for their servers. 
Once that's finished downloading, just close your web browser again. And back here in Flyby 11, we're going to go to this More Options dropdown on the left side of the app. And we'll go to the first option, Select from Computer. That'll give us a browse window here where we can navigate to our Downloads folder and select that ISO that was just downloaded. After we click Open, Flyby 11 is going to open up that ISO, which contains the Windows installer. After it's done reading that, it's going to launch a PowerShell prompt. And you can see we get a message that says success, Windows 11 installation can now proceed. Please follow the instructions in the setup window. As you can see, sometimes other things can pop up over that, the installer can pop up over that. So you might need to move some windows around to see everything that's going on here. I'm going to click OK to dismiss that prompt. And over here, we've got our install Windows Server window. Like I said, Flyby 11 is running the installer in server mode just because it doesn't have those compatibility checks from Microsoft. It's not actually installing Windows Server. It's still installing desktop Windows 11. Now I'd recommend just clicking next if we click on change how setup downloads updates here. You can see the default option is to download updates while we're installing Windows 11, which is what we want to do because otherwise you're going to have to install those updates afterwards anyway. The analytics checkbox at the bottom left is unchecked by default, so we'll go ahead and click on next here. And after a few more screens, we'll accept our license agreement from Microsoft. And on the choose what to keep page here, again, if the keep files, settings, and apps option is grayed out, that means that you selected the wrong language when you were downloading the ISO a few minutes earlier. So if that's the case and you want to keep your files, settings, and apps, close out of the server setup, run the tool again, and select the proper language. In my case, I did everything correctly, so this option is here, available, and it's selected by default. I'll click next again. And after a few more checks, the installer is ready to proceed. Once you click install here, it's going to launch a full screen overlay with a progress indicator. And this is going to take a little while. It is going to reboot the computer. So before you get to this part of the setup, make sure that you've closed any open applications or files that you are working on. But we'll just go ahead and wait for that to finish. The screen will turn off from inactivity after a few minutes. So if you want to watch the progress, just move the mouse to turn it back on. As you can see, after we get through that first percentage counter, the PC will restart. And you can see that spinner is already the Windows 11 style while we're booting up. And we'll have one more update screen to sit through once we're on Windows 11. And after that, we're taken straight to the login screen. So we can sign in the same way we did with Windows 10. We have our lovely high introduction that I'm sure is incredibly soothing when you are doing this on a lot of PCs or fighting with PCs. And finally, we will be taken to the Windows 11 desktop with our taskbar taking another second to load in there. And as you can see from the start menu, we are now in Windows 11. If we open up our updates page in the Windows settings, right down here at the bottom of the sidebar, you can see we are up to date as of right now. Again, in the future, Microsoft has stated that PCs that do not meet their purported hardware requirements may not receive updates. So even though Windows these days is pretty good about installing updates automatically, if you've got it configured to do that, if you've upgraded manually like this, you will want to go into your settings, check out Windows Update, just every now and then, every couple of months, make sure that you do have all of the updates installed that are available. You can see it just found a few after I clicked that button. And in the future, there may be some versions of Windows 11 that are not automatically installed on your system. And if that is the case, you can just use Flyby 11 again to upgrade to those. But in the meantime, as you can see, I am receiving updates as expected through Windows Update. So that's how easy it is to upgrade your PC to Windows 11 with Flyby 11. It's really just a few clicks. It's not much more complicated than the official Microsoft way of doing it. It just bypasses those completely artificial restrictions that Microsoft put in place, trying to require people to buy new computers. And to be fair, you know, some of those features are nice. It's nice to have a TPM of version 2.0, especially if you're using types of encryption that can actually utilize that. But if it's not required and you already have a PC that's working, yeah, no reason to throw that hardware out. Save the money, help the environment, keep your PC running longer. 
If this tool helps you, especially if you use it on a lot of computers, the developer does have a link to his donation page here in the releases, it's a PayPal donation page. The developer also does some other Windows utilities that you can go and check out on his GitHub profile. And if my video was helpful to you, bringing this project to your attention and showing you how to use it, you can go to nerdclub.nots.co to consider joining the Nerd Club for $3 a month, help me keep my content online and make more videos in the future. But for now, that's everything I wanted to show you. I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd on the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.